Gallant performance from Morocco. Yes, uh, Atlas Lions, they fought hard against France, but it was not to be as Ulysses Blue actually carried the day there, beating them 2 0 to qualify for the final of this year's World Cup. Welcome you on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Aji Shafe. Well, just have to look at that particular story. Uh, really, a lot of Africans were hoping that Morocco will also be on the roller coaster, a magic moment that they've been on against France after defeating Spain. Uh, uh, not forgetting Portugal and also Belgium in their journey at the Mundial, but it never happened. The uh, Morocco's magic moment actually reached successful for, well, for France. That was it. They ended Morocco's um, uh, moment of uh, magic and that particular game losing 2 0. Well, good one for France. Yeah, right now, they'll be facing Argentina in the finals, but for Moroccans, really, they fought gallantly. They were the real soldier from Africa. Really, they did well. The whole world celebrating them for what they did. No single drop of uh, tear but the tears of what of pride that they did well against france where you can call it the afcon final because the entire squad of france you have a lot of black players there in that particular squad well we just have to look at that story right now with uh, yusuf akogu with me in the studio yusuf yesterday i'm sure you you belong to france <laughs> <laughs> uh, no 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 seriously no, no. you were Morocco, it's, 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 you were african didn't come to play i'm an african of course, I can't leave my African brothers and be supporting European. Okay. Forgetting the fact that even France, they paraded quite a good numbers of uh, African players. They are all European. Mm. So let's uh, get that fact right. Mm. Uh, I think Morocco did very, very well yesterday. Uh, uh, I mean, they have nothing to regret about. They did so well. Nobody gave them a chance coming into this tournament. Mm. They were one of the biggest teams in Africa uh, uh, when they were going for this tournament. But if you look at the group that they actually came out from, where you have two European giants, uh, the Croatia, who are... Uh, Belgium. Who, uh, the Belgium as well, who they are, I mean, they are playing Croatia in the third place uh, losers final right now. So I think uh, Morocco did very well. They need to, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, there's nothing to actually regret about. They mm. need to actually, you know, look themselves in the mirror and say, look, we did very well. We did Africa proud. First time that we're having an Africa uh, playing in the semi final. Semi -final. They even played a, a losers game. Probably mm. we come third, you know, and it's a very good one. I think kudos to Moroccans. They give us a fantastic representation. The, the Africa and the Arab world, I think, should be proud of what they have done. We should be proud of what Morocco has done so far, qualifying for the semi final. Eventually, still will be the first African nation to get to the third place. Yes, they'll be fighting against Croatia on Saturday to see who gets the third place. And if they are able to win that, they will get a whooping $27 million for getting to at least winning the third place. Right now, they have $25 million at least getting to the final four. Well, whoever wins between France and Argentina will get 42 and the, uh, the opposing team will get uh, that's uh, $30 million. Well, what's the way to go at this World Cup? It has been a very fantastic performance from uh, Morocco. Atlas Lions, they've done well so far in this tournament, even though they lost that game against France. Yes, let's talk about France now. Uh, France, I love the fact that uh, uh, Morocco fought hard. In fact, they put them on their toes. Yes. Talking about France versus Morocco now, they put Mor uh, French team on their toes. If not, aside the fact that they scored that goal, you understand, yet Morocco never gave up. They kept trying to see how they can at least surprise France. Yes, actually, the Moroccans, they actually gave a very good account of themselves yesterday. When they considered that goal, in the very, that was the first goal they were considering against an opponent in this World Cup. I think kudos to, you should, must be given to their defense for that. I think what the, the French national team did was to study the, them very well. And the coach made a silly mistake yesterday, starting the captain who was not fully fit. Yes, size was not fit for that particular match. You know, that was it really impacted negatively on the team. He couldn't run, he couldn't attack the uh, Mpapi when he was coming. So they were already shot with, one. One man, exactly. Mm. So if it was uh, size in his element, I don't think Mpapi would have been able to get that ball and even, you know, get it to uh, Fernando. Uh, Hernandez for him to get a goal. So I think that goal, that early goal, actually changed the complexion of the game. Even five that, minutes. Five minutes, absolutely. So it was too early in the game, and then considering early in that, in, at, at that time for in a semi-final, as in a way, Morocco were actually trying to put themselves together. But again, the French team had a game plan: sit back, get them on a counter attack, which I think actually paid off eventually for them. So, but for the uh, French team, you take nothing away from them. They're fantastic. If you look at the depth of that squad, is Look at the bench. You know, now, just like you mentioned, looking at the bench, but do you know that there are some players that didn't even make this squad because of injury, Kante, Benzema, Pogba. They didn't make it. Okay. And now, still look at the way the <laughs> team is actually performing. Absolutely. If you look at yesterday, there was a change to the defense line. 
uh, the Upamecano was benched yes. today for Konate. And he worked out. But before the game, I was hoping that, okay, the only passage for Morocco is Upamecano. Because I was hoping that he was going to start the game. That, that was actually uh, their weak link. Yes. But uh, I think the coach read the game yesterday. Look, at look, if I allow this guy, Nesri will, will, easily, will, they will, will score. easily score here. So that was what they did yesterday. They made the change to that defense line. And it really, really worked for them. You look at the midfield, too, was very, very compact. Uh, uh, Griezmann was all over the pitch yesterday, mm. you know, uh, getting on the ball in there for, for, for the French team. They're a very, very good side. Uh, I mean, it's going to be very, very difficult for anybody to beat them in this tournament. Though Tunisia did it uh, when the game was like a dead rubber game, as we used to call it. So the, the energy was not really there in that game. So that was when they lost to Tunisia in this tournament. But the, again, for anybody to beat them to this cup, it's going to be a very, so, very difficult one. Right now in this World Cup, no team actually play all the games winning. <laughs> uh, absolutely. First, uh, if we check that record, <laughs> almost all the teams, have lost. Brazil lost against Cameroon, France against Tunisia, you have Argentina against Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Croatia also, they were defeated by Argentina, absolutely. and all of them, at least, everybody got their own pound of pound flesh. Of flesh. Absolutely. I think uh, what, what this actually goes to show is that football has actually uh, uh, is involving. Yes. Uh, every ball, the nations are no longer pushover. There is no longer minors, as we used to say, in football, although they are men. From, there is a, there are separate the men, from the boys. Separate the men from the boys. But again, uh, anybody can be beaten. Uh, when uh, Brazil, uh, Brazil uh, uh, coming into that uh, quarterfinal game against Croatia, they were hoping that they were going to, you know, uh, move on after that game. But again, it wasn't to be uh, coming into the tournament as one of the favorites. So they lost that game. So what that goes to show is that you can't underrate any team. Mm. Like even look at if you look at what Morocco has done in this tournament, I think it actually goes to tell you that look, football is developing all around the world. So anybody can beat anybody. Anyone can beat anyone. That's the word coming from you, Sov Akogo there. Really a fantastic run for Morocco, even though that particular run came to an end yesterday against France. But really, they've done well. They fought hard gallantly and they deserve to be given so much praise and accolade from across Africa and also across the globe for what they did just at the World Cup. Uh, not at least consider any goal, not until yesterday. That shows that they were ready for this tournament. And right now, for the first time in the history of Africa, we're having a team from Africa playing at, it, at least competing in the third place against Croatia. And remember, the first leg, the, ma the first match they played was goalless, and anything can happen because right now, uh, I'm sure Croatia will be like, what well, if these guys could play us nil-nil in the first leg, in the, first, in the group stage rather, mm -hmm. it is possible that they will be coming for a win. Because it would be very nice if you can have, right now we have uh, uh, a South America and a European, a European team at the, at at the, the final. final. Yes. So let's have an African, an African team getting the top getting place. The top place. Yes, that would be a balance. Uh, an uh, equation. Uh, equation. Let's, uh, let's bring in some uh, mathematics. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be the first thing that would be happening in, uh, in the history of FIFA World Cup. I think yeah, Morocco, and they are very good for that third place game. Uh, if you look at what they've done so far. Uh, they, You know, mo before now, African teams struggle against European. Morocco has really proven to us now, look, this is how to beat European teams. They did it to three European giants, uh, the Portuguese, the Belgium, and uh, uh, the, Spain. the Spain. This is a former, uh, former world champion. So I think uh, what that actually tells us now is that, look, uh, we can actually beat the European. We just only all we need to do is to get our concentration and, and, and the tactics right. So I think going into the third place game, uh, I think Morocco stand a, a better chance. Uh, if you look at what they have done so far, even losing to uh, to France yesterday, it was not as if they increased chances. They really played they well against France. A lot of chances. They, they had more did of well. the ball. They had more more. Uh, I mean, shot of target was seven. Uh, shot on goals of seven seven. Uh, it's just that they couldn't take their own chances. That was the, all the, in fact all the chances they missed and caught still off uh, who glory Lori really did well for France yesterday. He exactly. saved them in so many uh, where the Morocco will be able to score at least one or two goals. Yes. But we saw a very fantastic goalkeeper in Lori who actually showed class that yes, he's yes, yes. one of the best when it comes to goalkeeping department uh, in uh, the world. Absolutely, the experience you can't take it away from me. This is his first World Cup final. I mean, <laughs> back to back. Mm. And it's going to be, if you win again, it's going to be the first captain, I mean, ever to lift a World Cup back to back. So it's going to be, history is in the making for him. So he look at that and say, look. But why the history is in the making? He also look at Lionel Messi. Messi really. <laughs> 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 also looking at 
him himself getting that trophy. He's been there, or at least to the finals. He wants to see it now. This time around to lift it up. He was so close. He looked at it. He saw it. He touched it. <laughs> but you, you have to lift it up to show that you are the winner. Yes, and so now he saw it on home soil. Exactly. So to, so to say, so it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough. I know that the Argentines were praying in their mind yesterday. Please let us avoid it. Let's Morocco France. get a job for us. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody posted that the, the fear of uh, Mbappe or the French team. Yes, because because I, I just imagine, imagine if, uh, um, uh, what's his name now, uh, Benzema, Pogba, Kante, you know, at times, those injuries or whatever could be a blessing. A blessing because if they are there now, they could be playing. You know, you know uh, Pogba uh, with uh, his style of football. Of, of course. If you look at the, even the guy that got the second goal yesterday, Mwani. This Mwani, is like his, yes. His he just first game. 44, 44 20, seconds. 20, oh, 21 seconds. 44, 44 afterwards, he scored. Okay, okay, fine. So this is like his first game mm. of the tournament, or so to say. But look at, if you look at this French team, Ah, it's difficult to beat. Seriously. It's a very difficult but, team to well, beat. Well, uh, that would be a, a match that because a lot of people want to see for France as well as Argentina. Argentina, yes, it's going to be a game. I think it's worth it. In the, this work of worth it, if you look at the performance of these two teams, after uh, 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 Argentina lost their first game against uh, uh, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia, I think it was like a wake-up call for them. So they took it from then on down to this point in the final. They've not looked back. So I think it's going to be a very, very tight and close game. But as much as I want Messi to lift uh, his first World Cup, Your I, mind think goes they, to I think France. France has what it takes so to automatically, deny him that opportunity. Automatically, you are like head and heart going different places. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at what Messi has done in this tournament, he's done so very fantastically well. If you look at his performance against uh, Croatia in the semi-final, I mean, uh, what, what else can you say? Mm. You ne I never knew Messi still had that in him. That's why he got in high, set, setting that uh, third goal, and it was Messi of 18, 20 years uh, ago. So, but getting that uh, uh, assist for that goal, I mean, it was fantastic, and I think he deserved to win this, this World Cup, to mm. crown his we lost Ross career. Well, even though Messi deserve it, well, you also look at France too, they will be like, we also deserve it. Mbappe and Messi are right now on par on goal scoring. Uh, uh, that's uh, the numbers there. Five goals, but two, two, of, two of them actually have five goals. I look at the assists right now, but for that, Sunday will be the final moment where they will show who will get this particular trophy and who will get the golden boot. The two of them are really fighting for the golden boot right now. Five goals are peace between the two. I'm wait to see. Just, uh, we just can't wait to see who will win that game between France and Argentina. But for Morocco, really, they've been fantastic. And uh, right now, they will be fighting hard to get in third place against Croatia. After all, they've met before, and it was goalless. And let's see what they'll be doing against them right now. They may get some experience from Nigeria. Well, remember when we first met uh, at the Olympics, the 1996 Atlanta Olympics? Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we know what Brazil did against us. We Absolutely. know Argentina, and we know what we did against them by the time we met again. Absolutely. So, uh, from the way it is right now, Morocco will be fighting against Croatia on Saturday for the top place match, where they'll be fighting for $27 million uh, in that particular match. But for Argentina and France, for the $2 million at stake, for whoever wins and whoever loses that game will go for $30 million, $12 million difference. That's, actually, that's actually a lot of money. But I think, I, think, I think to the like of Messi, I think money is not even the yeah, But he wants to win it. For, he wants to of, win it. Of course. Mo money will be rich person. <laughs> <laughs> I think for Seriously. Him, for him, he wants to win the World Cup. If, if that is the case. <laughs> I want to surpass uh, yes, Diego Maradona. Yes, you have all the record. billionaires of this world. They still want to make more money. So uh, uh, they don't. Uh, they, nobody stops making money. Uh, uh, so for uh, Messi, he will want to win that trophy. Aside the money, he should just be because uh, if you look at his, uh, the history of his uh, achievement in Argentina, uh, late Diego Maradona is he having an edge before, because in 1986, single-handedly, you can say that word, mm. he actually helped make, uh, sorry, Argentina to win that World Cup in the yeah. hand. Yes, and, uh, the hand But this time around, <laughs> <laughs> Messi too wants to make sure he gets that yes, so and, that and the rating will balance. Yes, if you look at what the entire Argentina team have done so far in this tournament, they've actually played for Messi. Mm. They are there to actually, you know, mm. they are, they've given him all the necessary support to ensure that he make that history. He's a fantastic player. He's a standout player. He's, I mean, a go-to person for the Argentina team. And I think, to be honest, and to, I mean, to be fair to him, he did, he has done so well to deserve the World Cup. He deserved the World Cup, really. But, well, let the best team win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he deserved to, to win it. But uh, I won't lie to you, the French guys, too, they want to tell me now that Giroud doesn't want to win. No, they, are, they, actually, win. No, they, are, they want to win. They, 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 yeah, the two teams want to win, actually. Mm. So it's going to be a, a very, it's a balanced game. And I can imagine this, uh, the Brazilians, it will be like Croatia, you guys just wasted this slot, you know, against Argentina. 
uh, you know, I just imagine if that match between Croatia and Argentina would have happened, it would have been a very, very tough and balanced match. Yes, and uh, funny enough, the Argentina uh, uh, fans were actually praying for Brazil to lose. Yes, <laughs> and it worked out. And it worked out for them. I remember when the penalty shooter was going on, some of the fans were actually monitoring to see what was happening. <laughs> so the moment Brazil lost, they were, they were so happy because, because they, they feared that, that, oh, if the Samba boys should qualify, qualify it's going they to be face Argentina for them and too. Very and they difficult. know each other very well. They know mm. how what Brazil usually do to them anytime they meet in their Copa America and in other places. And they, although the last one they won against Brazil won the, uh, the Copa America, that is the only cup that Messi has won for Argentina so far. So I think they actually prayed and they, I think the prayer worked for them. <laughs> they're avoiding Brazil yes, there. Yeah, they 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 good to, one. To leave the World Cup. Yes, good one. We've been talking about the yes, the Qatar 2022 World Cup taking place over there. Uh, well, it has been a very, very good and smooth journey for Morocco. But that particular journey stopped yesterday. But they still have one, one shot at getting something at the World Cup. Aside from that, right now on $25 million payroll, they'll be getting that another extra $2 million if they are able to beat Croatia, who actually they've met before. It ended uh, in the stalemate, nil nil, but right now they can still rewrite history to become the first African nation to ever, ever win at least the top place at the Mundial. And we hope that they will do it this time around. Hopefully, Morocco really will make us proud. They've been very gallant in this particular race to the World Cup, and we can't just uh, but celebrate them for what they've done so far. Let's leave the World Cup and come home back home and talk about our own league. Yes, why the World Cup, uh, Bulhaha and all that has been going on. Let's talk about the Women's League, Nigerian Men's Football League. Marcus were playing day three, and let's look at those. Uh, let's talk, let's talk, let's start with the first story, Nasarawa Amazon, Wallop, Aqua, sorry, talking about Ibom Angels now, although they are still from Aqua Ibom, Wallop Ibom Angels as a do queen secure a way win. Good one for Nasarawa Amazon. They are currently playing over there in Makodi, uh, where they won their game 4-0. Now let's look at the result of other matches that were actually played uh, just on Wednesday. Looking at the results now, you have Bayosa Queens, uh, play goalless against Atla Queens of uh, Imo. You have Nasarawa Amazon, 1, 2, 3, 4, spelling Ibom there. They spelled Ibom and you have FC Robo Queen, the loss against Edo Queen. FC Robo Queen of Lagos, what is happening? This is their third game now. They've, been, they've not been able to win uh, in this encounter. They lost against Edo Queen, who came, saw, and conquered in Lagos. Delta Queen 3, Rhea Queen Snail. Good one for the Queens. Uh, the Battle of the uh, Queens in Delta State, but favor the Delta Queens. Nigeria Tells, 3 nil against Oshun Base. Good one for Nigeria Tells. And you have Adamawa Queens 1, Conference Queens of Kogi. Actually got nil there. Well, Adamawa Queen show class against the Conference Queen. Your Queen, uh, Yusuf, <laughs> your Queens are really sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a game of football, so mm. sometimes we'll, you lose, you win some, you lose some. So I think uh, the, uh, the uh, Conference Queen will bounce back in the next game. Mm. Well, what get, uh, at get, least get, I expect, get, I expect that very, from uh, you. Very good result. Mm. Uh, I, again, you know, when you see a uh, result like this, you know, uh, it actually, you know, tells you that the games of uh, female football, uh, uh, you know, is actually developing in Africa. But I think, I still think we need to do more. Uh, if we look at, uh, uh, I will, will keep making reference to Morocco. If you look at what they've invested so much mm. in football generally, including the female football, you remember the, the female, uh, uh, Morocco female national team, they are the champion of Africa right now, mm. both in the. Uh, yes, far. For uh, what they've done. Uh, absolutely. So it's as a result of that investment. I think the NFF and uh, uh, the ma management, uh, I mean, uh, NWFL. Uh, NWFL to actually look at how to, you know, invest more, bring in investment. I think one of the things that is actually, you know, working against our football, develop, football development in Africa and Nigeria particularly is this issue of corruption. Mm. You, know, you know, when the money is budgeted for a particular project and it's not carried out, so sometimes it affects, you know, even the, 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 the project itself and the quality of the game. So I think we need to do more so that, you know, we can have, you know, the quality of, uh, I mean, the kind of consistency that we've enjoyed in Africa. But mm. when, you, when you look at it now, the rest of Africa are actually catching up with us Good in many ways. Well, we just hope that we'll get it right. Just like we said, they are catching up, but it's very possible that we can still widen the gap again mm. to let you know that Morocco will be spending a whooping $20 million in their women's football come next season. Mm. And as we speak right now, they've started doing that. And right now, they are the defending champion. And you look at women in Africa when it comes to football, look at what the men are doing, the Moroccan men, Atlas Lion. Look at their women, look at the CAF Champions League, CAF Confederation. Really, Morocco really developing their football in both sides, both for men and for women. Hopefully, we can take a clue from this and get our football better. Now
Now, uh, we look at the table as it's actually stand after day three. Group A, we have Delta Queens with six points. Nigeria tells they have six points also on uh, plus five, plus four goal difference. By also Queens have four points. You have, or rather, uh, you have uh, Rivers Angels also, they have three points, followed by Oshun Babes, Ruya Queens, and you have Heartland uh, FC, or rather, Queens, or rather, just with a point. They just have a point there. Mm -hmm. And you look at Group B, Delta Queens running away with it there. Nasarawa Amazon, seven points. You have Adama Queens with six points, followed by Edo Queens, Abia Angels, Ebom Angels. You have FC Robo Queens, just one point from three matches. What is happening to FC Robo Queens? Well, Confluent Queens of Kogi 2, they are yet to even get one point after playing two games. Well, well, it's too early to call, but we wait at, uh, at <laughs> that saying that says, mm -hmm. always make here while the sun shines, it's always good here. Because if you say, okay, uh, it's too early to call. But now they play three, three matches. <laughs> Before you know it, mm. uh, day five, day six, day seven. So it's better for you to get your acts together. For National Amazon, mm. Delta Queens, they are really leading the pack in both group A and B in that particular, mm. uh, in those encounters there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, quickly. Okay, you have something to okay, say about uh, yeah, it. Yeah, like you said, it's, uh, it's too early in the day. Some mm. have played three matches, some still have a game in hand uh, to play. So I think it's too early in the day to call. But again, if you look at teams like Delta Queens, Natural Amazons, they are very good when it comes to female football. And they're actually, you know, you know, I mean, showing class there uh, so far. So the rest team that want to catch us, I'm so surprised for FC Robo that they have not really been able to get their act together at mm. this point. So, but, but going forward, I think uh, the management should do something so that, you know, subsequently they can actually get results for them, to, you know, to move up in the, in the league. A lot of stars in the FC Robo Queens. What's happening to that particular team? Well, they just have to get their act together. They have to do well. Giving you updates concerning match day three of the Nigerian Women Football League where the likes of Nasarawa Amazon we went gaga by defeating Ibom Angels 4 0 in that encounter. Well, good one for them. Not forgetting Delta Queens also winning big uh, just yesterday. Na Nigeria also won well uh, in their game. Good one. Uh, giving you an update there. Let's quickly run through some transfers before we wrap it up. Chelsea, the Blues, yes, they are in the news right now. They are among clubs who are keen on Juventus striker Jusan Blahovic. Blahovic has been uh, fantastic for uh, Juventus so far. But uh, uh, right now, the Blues wants a player who can actually man that forward, and they want to get uh, uh, Dusan uh, Vlahovic. Yeah, if there's any team that actually needs a striker right now, I think it's Chelsea. Mm. Uh, they're actually going for uh, uh, a world-class uh, player. Uh, it's a world-class player, it's a fantastic player. Do Juventus are not really doing well as you want to expect. It's, I think it's a product of the entire team. Uh, the team is, some of them are aged, they need to, they need to yeah, they, that, that. That's their style. I think in Italy, as they are, they always believe in old players. In fact, that's also metamorphosed to their team. That is the Azuris. Yeah, Azuris but, always feature but, old but, players. Football is changing. Yes, if, that's if you what, look, at that, look at what happened to them now, qualifying for the World Cup. It's not yes, easy exactly. because of the fact that they believe so much, much in, in old, players. old players. So, But the young people now, football is actually it's changing. It's changing, actually, so you can't believe in if, old players. If Italy anymore. should have been this World Cup, maybe they would have been out from They would have been, you know, if you look at the Belgium stage. Team, if you look at the Belgium, the Belgium national team, if you look at the back line, the entire back line are over eight players. Mm. You understand? So it was difficult for them to cope with this pace of these young boys. So football is not uh, of the old that you think that it, if you are, if you are it, 40, it's not the, 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 there, my, uh, I mean, the platini or whatever era. So this is changing. You look at what the like of Mbappe are doing, the Rash, Marcos Rashford are doing in, in, in this World Cup. So in fact, Marcos is even looking old. Look at Bellingham. Look at all these Jude young, Bellingham. young these chaps. Young, you know, yes. uh, Bukayo Saka. These are fantastic players. So football is actually, you know, <laughs> Tilting towards. Tilting towards the young people. Okay, so, well, yeah. before we go, just quickly, let me run this. Chelsea face competition from Manchester United and Liverpool for Borussia Dortmund, Yusuf Mukoko. Mukoko, fantastic player. And the last one says, Real Madrid are keen on forward Cody Gakpo of PSV and of to succeed Karim Benzema. Well, if that works out, that would be nice for Cody Gakpo. And from the way Real Madrid are looking at him, they want to go for him there. Just to wrap it up there, good one for Morocco. Wishing them the best against Croatia. Hopefully, they'll become another first African to make that particular historic moment. Well, Yusuf Akogu, thank you very much for coming on the show. Always a pleasure being here. You actually look like Moroccans. <laughs> <laughs> well, good African. one there. Yes, uh, we're all Africans. I am Adini Aji Shafe. Thanks for watching.